All right. Well, it looks like we're live. We made it live. I'm excited to be on tonight. We're on to week 75 of our virtual tastings, which is crazy. Um, tonight, we've got a really awesome lineup. We've got wines selected by Dr. Becker's sister, Carolyn. So she's joining us tonight, as well as Dr. Richard Becker, Dr. Joseph Becker, our winemaker, uh, John Leahy, and then myself, Kaylin. Um, we'll be tasting through the 2014 Wilmoth Family Vineyards Cabernet Sauvignon Reserve, as well as the 2019 um, Cab Syrah Reserve and the 2018 Culinaria. And I think I'm going to pass it over to the gentleman to lead us off. Thank you, Kaylin, for another wonderful introduction. <clears throat> but I'm, <laughs> I'm going to taste this wine and I'm going to make Dr. Becker talk. <laughs> well... <laughs> I think we always uh, like to, to remember and reach out to all the people fighting this terrible battle. 75 weeks of this for us and uh, much harder weeks in the hospitals, schools and, and other places where social services are provided. Uh, we're approach, approaching uh, the number of deaths in the 1918 uh, epidemic of 675,000, um, 1,500 deaths last week. Texas is only about half vaccinated. If you're not vaccinated, whatever your reasons are, your children can't reason with you. You need to get vaccinated to protect them. The, the, how safe is the vaccine? 310 million doses given in the United States. Three deaths, all from Johnson & Johnson uh, with clots. No deaths, no really terrible complications from the Pfizer or Moderna. If there were one, it would be Fox News for a month, uh, you know, just endless reels. It's safe. You know, whatever your reasons are, uh, forget them. You need to get vaccinated for your children. And, when, and, and Joe, anything you'd like to add? No, I think that's perfect. I think that's well said. Thank you. Okay, John, let's talk about this fabulous wine that Carolyn has picked. Vaccine first. <laughs> I'm sorry? Talking about the vaccines first. You said no deaths, but how many zombies? I'm sorry? I'll be delighted to talk about the wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. Okay. Man, I tell you that um, the nose on this, it's starting to open up. I did not get this open until about a half an hour ago. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm not doing justice. This uh, 2014 certainly needs to be decanted for, for quite some time. That's nice. So um, what do you get on the nose, Doc? I'm, I, mine's still a little closed in. I'm getting, I'm getting exceptional eucalyptus. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you know, then the classic Bordeaux forest floor and saddle leather and you know all, the, all those wonderful things, hummus, humus, hummus. And um, um, it's just, this is extraordinary, John. I mean, all three of these wines, my, my hat's off to you. And to, my, and to Carolyn for picking them. Right. Really I think we need to ask Carolyn why she picked this wine. Yeah. Well, I love every cab that you've ever made. You just, you just hit them out of the park, and it's it's hard to decide which cab. I mean, so uh, you know, we had some of this. We had tried it recently, and um, you had some available, so that's what we went with. Fantastic. It's well, so I think we can so now that I made a perfect cab. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, but you know, you also chose a couple of other interesting wines tonight. Were there are these your favorites? What are what were your your decisions behind the choices? Well, first of all, I think to ask for a favorite Becker wine is just that's really cruel. I mean, <laughs> how do you how do you choose? It's just really it's the one I'm with. You know, love the one you're with. And uh, I chose the um, Cab Syrah because. Since I don't live near an HEB and I and I don't live near the winery, I depend on some of the distribution wines, and so do, and so do a lot of people that we know. If I give them a bottle of wine, I can say you can buy this at Specs, whether if you don't want to order it from the winery. So I just think it's good to have those out there and and realize what incredible things are available um, just at your local beverage store. So. Right on. And, then, and, then, and the iconoclast, I mean, not the iconoclast, the uh, culinaria every year is a, is a surprise and a treat for us. It's different every year, John. Every year it's wonderful. 
So it's always going to be a favorite. Always going to be a favorite of ours. The funny story about that is the first time John made culinario, before I tasted it, I saw the ingredient list. I looked like <laughs> 10 different, you know, totally un, un unblendable together choices. And I said, this will never work. And I tasted it and I said, my God, it's fabulous. <laughs> it's, a tr it's a truth, John. I don't know if you remember that or not, but. Uh... <laughs> just, to, just to clarify, because if a couple of people are wondering what we're drinking, just to clarify, we're drinking the reserve cab. The 14 Wilmoth. Uh, 14 yes. Wilmoth cab, yeah. Yes. Oh, good. Mm. Oh my goodness. So Carolyn, what, what, uh, when you smell and taste this, what jumps out at you? I think, I think everything that Richard said, I mean, the, the Bordeaux overwhelming um, tastes and um, it's the, sm the smoothness. It's just, it's just the right place with the tannins and, and all of the wonderful fruits you've got going in there. Um, so that's it for me. Okay. Now I, I have... think... Go ahead, John. Oh, no, no. I was just getting ready to make a smart out comment. Surprise. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Is this going to be about turnovers? Let's just get it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 um, I think it's, it's, it's fun to, you know, to it's always fun to taste, um, you know, grapes from, from Jet's Vineyard, you know, so, so far along, you know, seven, seven years, uh, you know, where they always come out just with such rich, dark fruit notes. And it's, it's fun how this wine matures in the bottle. You know, I think it, it has, it has developed some of the, uh, the forest floor um, eucalyptus that you get. And it's, it's, it's very cool that we can, that these Texas grapes are, you know, showing Bordeaux characteristics over time. Oh yeah. They, you know, I, I always said that, you know, when we make those two, um, the two single vineyard cabs that we do almost consistently are always the Canada and the, and the Wilmot vineyards and Canada comes out very strong early on and Wilmot is slightly muted. It's first six months or so. Then they start paralleling each other. Then after about three years, they're both totally different wines in the bottle, but Wilmot always comes out after two to three years that's when it really starts to shine and it has, they both have a lot of long staying power, but the Wilmoth to me is always the, um, the one that always surprises me the most after tasting it in bottle a few years later, it's like, wow, the fruit is there. It's just really forward. Then it's, um, there's a lot of great mature notes to it. Um, I was very happy, Carolyn, when you chose this wine, because we, we've had it one other time and, you know, on the virtuals to be able to go back and taste it again, uh, you know, almost a year later, it was wonderful. And I, my pleasure. When it's when it's young like that, or yeah, I'm sorry, young. When it's freshly decanted, I do get a lot of um, of the earthiness, but I also get a note, um, almost like a soy sauce note on there, which tells me that it needs air. That's that's a, a reductive edge on red wines that I've noticed consistently with, especially with cabs. If you get that touch edge, it will go in a way after about 30 to 45 minutes, it opens up, it blossoms out. But it also tells me that the fruit is still intact, which is kind of nice. Doc, what are you, what are you, uh, what are you getting in your, in, besides the, the notes, anything else you want to add about the, um, the cab itself? Well, again, I like it. So the way it's it's complete it's the way it's uh, you know the you know the, the tannin the fruit uh the acidity the balance is there and it's there on the nose and it's there on the palate it's there on the finish and uh just very uh very balanced john uh, and and in the best way um uh, i'm just i'm really proud of this so i would say and i to joe to, um or john or carolyn is there a kayla is there a a French Bordeaux. This reminds you of. I always, I always try to think of other wines I've tasted. And that was uh, going to be the same question, Dad. I know what I'm, um, yeah. Give me, a, give me a second. Somebody else answer. Uh, you know, you, you have um, in your cellar. You, you, you and I have tasted um, some, some. You have some Chateau Menet. Um, mm -hmm. That this has a very similar 
um, quality to that darker darker fruit uh, fruit notes. And Montrose is coming to my mind. Yeah. Um, John, well, John, you, sir, yes. California cab that uh, this reminds you of. Yes, yes, I was just trying to think. I mean, because that that really nice forest floor note uh, I've noticed in the Stags Leap District a lot in Napa, but I've also noticed it out of Knights Valley. Um, there are a few brilliant cabs coming out of that little area in Sonoma County, um, which, which is an unsafe area of Sonoma County. Um, that have these incredible flavors. And it always surprises me. Cabernet is Cabernet, of course. I mean, if we, if we make it varietally correct, you will always be able to discern it. But there's some familiarity in this wine that just makes me laugh. It's like there's this yeah. like rich cab note to it that just doesn't seem to be as common in a lot of cabs, but they're common in a lot of good cab areas. You know, the AOTs that are known for for a good cab. I'll tell you, Dan. I'll tell you what. What this is similar to me uh, is is that Chateau Belgrave. Um, you know, a little bit younger. Um, yeah. Kind, kind of, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. And well, also, John, this is very young. Uh, you know, yeah. just in the way it tastes. Uh, this will be great in ten years, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Hmm. Okay, Carolyn, you know that eventually we're going to ask you for a food choice when we go through all three wines. And so eventually is that time now or is yeah. later? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on Kaylin here for a little bit, but then <laughs> I can stay with you for 45 minutes, John. You're good. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny, you know, cab we we're so trained that it, it you have to have a good rich meal or, or something to handle the tannins on there. And I have frequently enjoyed the Wilmoth as a glass by itself, which is probably one of my, my guilty pleasures is being able to have a glass of Cabernet. Just no, your, your titles. <laughs> a glass. Um, it's fun to do. I mean, it, it Sure. There are times you want food with it, but then there are times I just want to taste the wine. I just want to know what the wine is doing. All right, so I have I, I want to I have a a statement I wanted to say, and I'm going to kind of transition it to to Carolyn. But um, you know, working with you know Jet Wilmoth watches these a fair amount, and um, absolutely wonderful person to work with. Um, very very. Uh, Caring, a lot of pride in his grapes. Um, you know, the, the first time you if you if you see his vineyard and you appear for the first time, he wants to show you, he wants to put you in his pickup truck and go about 80 miles per hour through the um down the grape rows and, and show you. But one of the things that he always says is he loves talking to Carolyn about the weather. <laughs> so, so I wanted to hear your comments on that. Well, you know, the, the joys of growing up in West Texas is you can see it coming. <laughs> <laughs> We've lived a lot of places where you, you, you never see the horizon, but West Texas, I mean, my mother would walk out, our mother would walk out in the, at about one o'clock, she'd look at the sky and she'd say, there's a blue norther coming, get the clothes in. <laughs> and it was a, it was a perfect day. They didn't send me out to the clothesline to get the clothes <laughs> That's in. Right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> And, and and you you could just see it, and then you know that the wind would start to tumble. The tumbleweeds would blow down the street. I mean, it, it's an it's an exciting, dynamic place to watch the weather. And and uh, I've I've never recovered from that. I just, ask Joe. I have to watch it. Every, we have to watch it every night because I have to. <laughs> okay, that visual. I now want to see Dr. Becker in a pair of spurs walking down the street. <laughs> <laughs> So, so John, um, some of the some there's been some questions about the, the blend on this wine. Could you, you mind sharing us the, the, the blending notes? Oh, I, I don't mind at all. As a matter of fact, I'm probably in the perfect position to do so because I'm sitting at my computer for some reason. Uh, I think it's called Harvest. Um, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Let me bring up my 
blending notes. And we'll get into the 14. You're going to have to give me a second, Mike. The so while, so while, while John's getting his notes, sure. So um, I think just to remind people out there about, you know, 13, you know, 13 was the year we had a, we had freeze. We had uh, May 13th, we had uh, incredible freeze in Texas. We uh, obviously we'd had bud break at that point. We lost a lot of our, our buds. We lost, we had a, a really down harvest year and, um, you know, 14 was, was one of our, our great recovery years. You know, I, it was 14, the, the, the Malbec and Petit Verdot from, um, through Talents Vineyard Mason in 14 is what won the um, double gold in San Francisco for us. So it's a pretty, pretty amazing year to think about in retrospect. Yeah. Oh yeah. 14 was, um, was incredible. So here the, it's at its heart and soul, it's Jet Cabernet and Jet Merlot. Those are the only two components to this wine. Now there are, are three uh, components of Cabernet. They're all Jet's Cab. It's just because I aged them differently, um, different barrel regime. And two of them were experimental yeasts for that year uh, to try uh, two new strains of yeast on Cabernet specifically. Um, and then the Merlot uh, is about, uh, it's 85% Cab and 15% um, Merlot Good. Is, is the blend on this. And it's all from Jet's Vineyard, um, the, the Merlot and the Cabernet. It's just the, there's listed three different cabs and it's my notes here indicate which which yeast that we're using, and then the uh, barrel regime that we had. So, and we uh, put this blend together, it was actually put together early. Um, this is a 14 cab. We actually put this blend together in uh, December of 2015 and put it back to barrel hmm. um, for, the, for about eight months. Uh, so we put it together early, put it back to barrel. Uh, and then that following summer, we bottled it and released it in the fall at the age of two. So any idea how many blending sessions we did on this one, do you know? Uh, we only did one. Um, really? Yeah, we did one and we had four choices. Okay. Uh, one of the choices we had also included some of the Jet Malbec. Uh, okay. We didn't use that one. Um, the, other, the other two choices had uh, slightly less Merlot and one of the choices had more of the um, stand, more of the experimental yeast versus the standard yeast that I was using on cabs at that time. Good. So that, that was with Carolyn, what does this uh, make you want to uh, cook? <clears throat> I mean, I think something, I mean, deep is wonderful. I, I think something not, not spicy, just something that doesn't compete with the mellowness of this wine. Uh, my son-in-law just brought over some brisket that he had in the smoke for 26 hours. And I tried it right before I had this and that was pretty good. So maybe I can rely on him to provide me with brisket, but um, I don't know. I mean, even, uh, even a creamy pasta dish or a, I don't know what. Sounds delicious. Chick, a, chick, a chicken Dijon or something like that would be good. All anything. And just by that, itself, John. It's just perfect. Yeah. I think John's drooling. Yeah, I am, pretty much. Uh, I am, I'm eating salt-free cashews as I <laughs> uh, I'm thinking that um, what Carolyn just described is much better than salt-free cashews. <laughs> okay, shall we go on to the next wine? You bet. Uh, which, which do you pick next, John? Well, I kind of like your idea of going to the culinary. Okay. Honestly, Cab Syrah is pretty canon. Uh, it's pretty sharp. Yeah, that's what I thought too. And this this wine is pretty sublime. Mm. <laughs> this may be illegal, John. I don't. I don't Carolyn, get... I love this. I love this pick. Well, tell me, tell can you, any any what what were your thoughts leading to the culinary? Well, as I was, I was telling John, every year it's different. It's it's a wonderful surprise and it's always superb. So this is just incredible. Just wow, it's just amazing. What was the vintage year of this one? Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. 
I want to pull up the 18 blend comps on this. So this has a lot of uh, just absolute uh, richness, roundness, um, almost a little black cherry, um, kind of on kind of on the mid palate. Um, I have to say though, Kaylin, your can we can we hear your thoughts? Sorry, I'm at the main street location, so okay. they're still okay. open. Um, so if there's background noise, bear with me. Um, but before you got on, um, it was Doc, Margaret, and I on, and we were talking about this culinaria. And I have loved many vintages of culinaria. Um, and what I think stands out to me is how um, adaptive this wine is. Like it can fit almost any circumstance. I tell people frequently um, whenever they come in and they're like, well, we're not really sure what we want to drink. Um, da, 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 da. This will fit the bill for almost any palate, any, any weather situation, um, any meal that you might be having. It's a perfect dinner party wine if you're unsure of what the host may prefer to drink or what the dishes will be. Um, it's always going to be a crowd pleasing, palate pleasing wine. And um, I, when I picked it up initially on the nose, I got um, all the toasty good notes, but also some maybe dried cherry or cranberry components, bright red fruits, um, maybe a little bit of vanilla, but there's just a, yeah. a lot of layers to this wine. And I think it's something that um, it's, I'm happy it's showcased here. It's something that I know that we've talked about a number of times with different vintages, um, but I don't know how many times we've done this particular vintage and I've forgotten how delicious it is, even though I talk about it so much at the winery and I'm happy to have some in a glass here. So I, I, I mean, I, for me, I, I just, I love the spirit of culinaria. Um, for me, you know, just culinaria is the, for, for people that have, I'm sure many have heard this before, but some who haven't, culinaria is the, the name of a local, uh, much beloved food and wine uh, festival in San Antonio uh, that, that used, that was formerly called um, the New World Wine and Food Festival. And I, 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 I believe it em embodies a lot of what my mother stood for that, um, you know, we were, you know, so when you, if you think about my, one of the things my mother always wanted was to make friends. Well, that's what I always loved about culinaria, the new world wine and food festival. Like particularly, I remember um, the year that Ar they, they, it was the Argentine, Argentina themed year. And so they had chefs and winemakers from Argentina. And um, I remember a, a wonderful um, winemaker from Argentina who was, you know, very well known, but he was, he was there pouring his wine, interacting. Um, he really, I always felt like he learned a lot and you got to know a lot of people in the food and wine world. And so I, what I, what I, taking a step forward, what I love about this wine is that it's an incredible blend of a lot of the grapes that do really well in Texas. And so like the Culinaria Food and Wine Festival, I think it really showcases what we can do in Texas um, and that we can compete with, you know, a lot of great wines from all over the world. I, and, I, and I think, John, this is an incredible piece of winemaking. I, I love the blend. I love the, the way this is aged. Yeah, it, it's, you know, <clears throat> I was saying earlier when I first stuck my nose down into the glass, was the amount of brown spice that came right up out of the glass without even, yeah. I was um, really jumped out. Now this is a, so it's got Zinfandel, Barbera, Petit Syrah, Moved, Dolcetto, Cabernet, and Tanat in the blend. Um, so as I said, a lot of wines that probably should not have ever been blended together and they, they came together uh, quite nicely, um, oddly enough. So we tried, we tried a bottle last night just to get warmed up. And um, that, partic <laughs> that particular bottle, it had, it had, the, it had almond, you know, you're talking about the, the toasty. Mm -hmm. It had almond and, and mince pie, Richard, I swear. But, but this doesn't. So <laughs> I've got a, I, can't, I can't add those, those thoughts to this. Just... You're tasting the almond, your, your tongue didn't go numb or anything, did you? Didn't get <laughs> so we, we had. Uh, I only wish you would, you know. <laughs> right. We, we had uh, our David and, and Pat Mazursky, two longtime friends of, of mom and dad and uh, two people that were very much involved in the culinary scene in San Antonio. We had them, they were visiting the winery a, a month or two ago and we were sitting out um, 
and just really, they loved this bottle of wine. You know, the culinaria was something that they kind of helped put on. They kind of helped start. And, um, you know, they absolutely loved the blend on this wine. It, it's, I agree, Carolyn. I, it's, yeah. Every time. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting that the, uh, the Reader's Digest wine writer picked the 25 best wineries to visit the United States. And they picked, we were one of them, one of the 25. And uh, they featured uh, in the, the announcement about our winery, a bottle of culinary. Did you see that, John? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. And I thought, I thought that was really interesting and, um, and loved it. You know. I, I love putting the culinary together every year. It's absolutely fun. Um, I was always a little disappointed that they moved the main event to September. Um, right in the middle of harvest. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you know how it is, John. I'll describe it for you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I appreciate that, Joe. Uh, yeah, um, and then the year they did, I, we were very busy. I, I did manage to go down for the grand tasting all the next day. So, but it it's always a fun event to be able to participate in during the weekend. All the, the classes, you know, the little lectures that everybody puts on, the panels, the tastings. You know the pairings. I, it's just a. It really, it's a great time to showcase San Antonio. Uh, one of the one of the great years I remember uh, is one of my favorite. Uh, speaking of that, John, one of my favorite memories is doing the. We did a vintners dinner um, at what used to be Francesca's at Sunset at um, the La Cantera Resort, which was right. One of my favorite restaurants you know you would you could when you sat and you, you could, I mean obviously you if you ate near sunset and they brought the the curtains up and you could see that it was absolutely a beautiful place and uh we did a we did a we poured our wine uh, i think it was our, our cab maybe with uh, miguel torres and um just i just I, I i love it i look for it every year you know one year i got to meet one of the uh the Drew Han sons. It's just, it always is a, a wonderful thing, wonderful uh, meeting people, tasting wine, eating, eating a lot, obviously. Yeah. And obviously, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Doc, when did, uh, speaking of culinaria, you were involved fairly early on. What, uh, when, when did that start and what was the impetus? Yeah, I went to the, uh, I went to the, the meeting when it was, when it was formed. Uh, I was, uh, and it, the board, the first board meeting was like at least 15 years ago, maybe, maybe a little slightly more. I, I don't remember exactly which year, but that was the, and it was going to be, uh, it was going to be named the Day of the Dead Wine Festival. And, um, uh, and uh, that, that was, I think, Henry Cisneros. <laughs> yeah. I said, well, that, that has meaning, but I, I, it, it's not very encouraging. So um, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe we could have a brighter meeting for this. Honk to Kamar. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, they could have showcased the Honk to Kamar. <laughs> honk to Kamar is better than Dia de los Muertos. Yeah. Anyway, but it's been a while. It's been really wonderfully handled, and it's done a lot. A lot of great people have been here in San Antonio uh, from all over the world for this. It's been it's been a great experience. Absolutely, I, I and I absolutely love the vibe of San Antonio. Um, it it's always a pleasure to go down and visit. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, so so. Um, Oh yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Joe. I was just going to ask what what is the uh, if I apologize if you've already said, but what is the vineyard makeup on the culinaria? Okay, there's um, there's uh, a Jet Wilmoth, Drew Talent, uh, Farmhouse, uh, Becker Estate, and Canada. Okay, thanks. The uh, the Drew's got his Barbera and Petit Syrah and Tanat in there, and then we've got Jet with some Zin um, and Dolcetto. And then um, the Becker and Canada both have some Cab and, and uh, Merlot in there. You know, Tanat is the, uh, is the washtub base of mu musical instruments and grapes. And um, whatever you have Tanat, you know, it has, uh, it has soul that it's monosyllabic. It's- um, You mean cowbell? Uh, <laughs> Well, exactly. I mean, well, well, washtub bass and cowbell, two great uh, <laughs> instruments. And, uh, I am glad you're not leading the Philharmonic. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I they haven't called, but uh, you never know. Something of that. Exactly. <laughs> uh, 
Um, that, that wine is very, very nice. Okay. Have we heard enough of, I want to hear more from Carol about this. Yeah. Uh, so, so what are you know, this wine, Carolyn, and what, is, what does it inspire? You mean for, for cooking? Or running around, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, pushing people over on their bicycles. I don't know. <laughs> That's not funny, John. <laughs> um, you know, I, I almost would like to have like a quiche Lorraine or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's it's so it's so balanced. I think you know, but it can stand up to something with a little, you know, with chives or green onions and, and mushrooms. It just and a kind of a rich uh, quiche with some good cheeses in there and pie crust. Um, My speciality, right? <laughs> reminds me of a great uh, bumper sticker I saw in Castroville. It said, Quiche me, I'm Alsatian. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I don't know. That just that just sounds good to me right now. And Kaylin, what do you have any any, any last words on culinary? Are you well and I also, because it's been a while since we've had any type of large events like culinaria at the winery, I've forgotten how much fun and crazy it is to have those events, you know, and have those awesome chefs out yeah. to prepare these meals. And I'm, I'm formulating my game plan. I've got a vacation day that I have thrown in on a random Thursday next week, and I'm going to San Antonio. So I'm trying to format my my route for where I'm going to eat and how many meals can one person eat in one day and still be a you too. I know I'm like that's on the list I almost forgot and I've been talking about it for weeks so I'm now hey, just I, about I recommend Waco I recommend Waco place to go for vacationing <laughs> and touring yeah. and <laughs> this is when mom used to say oh Richard hush up <laughs> <laughs> well I did want to mention too, this weekend, I met some um, lovely people who were from, from Abilene, but now lived up in the High Plains and they were talking about Perini. And I was thinking that it's about time for a field trip. And that is my biggest hint I can drop on um, a live feed. So we should take a field trip. That's what I think. Let's, let's go, let's do it. Look at like the bus. Kaylin will send the postcard. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, Perini tenderloin goes with all of these wines, that's for sure. Oh, yes, that's no argument here. What I was thinking initially, that's it, it's all come around food related, all of this. But yeah, that's what's actually happening behind here. <laughs> the secret about the culinaria, this particular culinaria, mm -hmm. it works extraordinarily well with tiramisu. Oh, oh, wow. That is also something I enjoy. No, I really was thinking of thinking of dessert, of a dessert with this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I mean, there is, there is so much tart cherry. Yeah. There really is so much tart cherry in this. I think maybe a little cherry pie wouldn't go on there. Cherry turnover. <clears throat> Just saying. Good day. Yeah. Thanks, John. Okay. I want black forest cake now. I don't know. Oh, oh, I mean, black forest cake. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Apparently, it's getting close to dinner time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like all good Americans were talking about dessert. Uh, okay, Capsara. It smells so good. Oh, you're not kidding. I know. See, I've got mine in a big glass, and I I smelled it earlier, and I've since returned to it, and it is. So delightful. This I don't get to smell this or try this often, so I was very excited that it was in the lineup just because it's typically one of the wines that um, is not available within the actual winery for purchase um, or sampling. And holy smokes. It's so bright. It, it's just <laughs> an explosion, you know, of brightness and fruit and, you know. I feel like it smells like all of the best things, like strawberries and roses and tea, and just delicious. I'm very pleased with this. Dad, what was? Do you have an original inspiration for the Cab Syrah, Dad? That you were that, that you were yeah, thinking? Yeah. Or? 
in, uh, in Australia. Um, I, I think that's where I first, they were doing it when we were down there and uh, tasted the number of wineries. And maybe something, one in California, I can't remember so well, John, about California, but um, there are an Australian idea, I thought. One of my first experiences with it was um, a winemaker by the name of Wayne Donaldson. He's, he was the head winemaker for Treasury Estate um, for a while. It's a Aussie gentleman, best sense of humor, like most Aussies, got a great dry sense of humor um, and absolutely full of life and uh, discussing that. And so that we um, we tried a little bit of Caps Raw Blends uh, on the blending on the blending bench. Um, and that was uh, an eye-opening experience that Syrah accomplished the Cabernet so well. Yeah, you, I know it, yes. Surprise. Why don't you land on that in terms of percentages, John? Um, yeah, for the Cab Syrah, um, looks like we've got, I'm look, I'm adding up all the different Syrah, or the, all the different cabs, because I've, I've used uh, uh, a Six Hearts cab in this one, the Ready cab, the Canada cab, the Becker cab, and then the Leje Vineyard Syrah, and, uh, uh, is the Syrah component, and that's 31% of this blend is Leje Vineyards Syrah. Um, so, and I'm going to repeat that again, Leje Vineyard Syrah, not Leje. <laughs> uh, uh, another fantastic grower up in the High Plains that we were fortunate enough to be able to keep the fruit from in 2019. Um, and then the Talent Petit Verdun. So, uh, that's, there's just a, there's about 5% petite Bordeaux in here. So a little more cowbell. Uh. <laughs> well, you know, we, we made a great one. Gosh, uh, the, the one that, that uh, Joe, that Will uh, the, the found about the last 10 cases for his wedding, or had them shipped to uh, Massachusetts. And uh, and Tom Leffler, <clears throat> the, the, the congressman who'd run for, run for governor and uh, was a, uh, came into the winery and, and uh, bought eight cases to take to a, a, a hunting expedition in uh, upstate New York. Uh, and he said uh, to me on the way out, would you like to go and talk about the wine? And uh, this was a really good bird hunting expedition. <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, and I went uh, in one of his planes. But it was terrific. It was just a wonderful experience. But this was the wine that was poured at Joe's at, at Will's wedding, go right. Yes, that's absolutely right. And some Chardonnay too. That was the Chardonnay was really good. Right. And I yeah. standing there, somebody said, "Do they really make wine in Texas?" I said, "That's what you're drinking." <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to jump right in with my food recommendation at this point. Uh, and I and I'm I'm thinking Opa's sausage. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. Fredericksburg. I mean, something something spicy to kind of push back with this. The Altdorf. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah, I can see that. There are a lot of pyrazines in this coming through. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Bell pepper. Uh, Ed, this wine. It's very young wine. I think. Um, I think this particular caps raw. If, if it hangs out long enough, I don't know if it's all going to get consumed. We. Um, uh, we made about 18,000 gallons on this blend, about 7,600 cases. We haven't bottled it all yet. Half of it's still in, in barrel. We bottled part of it and left the other part in barrel until after harvest to bottle. So it's a very young wine. Um, this thing is going to go on for a long time. I thought, so I thought, it, was, I, I thought it was older. <laughs> yeah, pardon me. <laughs> Yeah, this is a 2019 blend. We we put the blend together in October of 2020 and then put it back to barrel. And then we bottled this particular bottling didn't happen until uh, late spring this year, until uh, spring of 2021. So this is still fairly young. It's just, just literally was released to the marketplace right before harvest started. It's got a beautiful fruit note. Um, that I, that I think is just it, it kind of a little bit on the back palate that I think is just going to mature with time. Yeah. That's, uh, I'm very pleased. It's nice and young. It's not shocky in the bottle. It's beautiful. This is doing nicely. Carolyn, that was a very good choice. <laughs> I wish I could buy GSM locally. Can you make that happen for me? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> 
that's just, that's so very nice. We have a very nice gentleman that works with us. His name is David, and, and he is like a dog with a bone when you tell him to go out into the marketplace. I know. <laughs> Maybe want to hang with. He is he's <clears throat> not making it. Well, we don't have HEBs here. That's the problem. Well, we're making, HEB? No, it's not making it to Central Market. Um, but uh, HEB is making its um, statement in Dallas, not too far from in 2022. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, we, they just opened up one up in Lubbock uh, last year. Yeah, so they are, they're heading into Northern Texas. Yeah, it's, sure. it's such a, a tight market in, in uh, grocery stores. So we're, we're glad to have them. Well, you know, we're also carried in other grocery stores too. <laughs> gotta, you got to get lucky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I the the cab Syrah has always done very well for, uh, out in the marketplace. People seem to enjoy. It. But it's a it's a great wine. If you're if you're doing a picnic, a barbecue, a, a grill, steak grill, you know, having company, it's a it's a nice glass of wine to be able to give to yeah. some and, and and have a, a very nice and pleasant evening, a nice meal. It's a very welcoming glass of wine. Uh, I think it's the way I would like to see it. So. Doc, what do you think? Any other thoughts on the Cab Sarah? No, but it, it does have a, it has a lot of spice, a lot of cassis. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's dried cherry. It's very nice, I think. I love it. It's a wonderful <laughs> wine, especially back to back with that Polinaria. I mean, they're just absolutely yeah. beautiful, rich wines. Right. Yeah, these are, I, you know, for everybody joining us, these are wines readily available out in the marketplace. So, um, I, which is kind of fun. I like it when a glass of wine like this is an ambassador to the rest of the winery. You know? that's, that's my message, John, really, to, to people. And that's why when I give, as I said, when I give wine away, I like to say you can, and you can buy this. Right. And like, for example, the Claret. Mm -hmm. People, the claret's wonderful, and people you know, really love it, and it's a great wine to, to give to somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what a delightful wine. Okay, so um, well, it looks like Caitlin had to take a break from the video, but um, you know, I, I think it's time now to, to really think of a great meal. You can choose one for all three wines, or you can choose for one wine, and I'm going to give you a moment, Carolyn, to, um, to think, but I'm going to pick on Joe first. Um, sure. Yes. You know, I, I think that the, um, if I were to have a, a, a you know, a, a meal with these wines, I think that I would probably start, you know, I think you could probably enjoy, you probably enjoy any of them on their own. I think the Wilmoth Cab, um, you know, you could start with just, you know, on its own. I think you could, you could probably do the reserve cab Syrah with with a shepherd's pie. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, um, our, our chef uh, Michael at the winery makes one, and I think that culinaria. You know, you could really do a um, an absolutely um, beautiful, uh, you know, kind of richer dessert. Maybe a maybe a turnover, as Carolyn was suggesting. But uh, I think there's a lot of versatility amongst these wines. Oh, I think so too. Kaylin, you have to come up with a meal and a wine. A whole meal <laughs> and a whole wine? No, I've got it. Um, what I, well, a full meal, what I was thinking was for the um, Wilmoth 14 cab, I would like to do like a beef and barley stew. We're almost to that weather where I want that. Right. Um, but I honestly, with the Cab I want to make a strawberry rhubarb pie. Ooh, that would be good. That's really what I'm after. And what I, I don't know, my mind is on desserts. It's been on desserts most of the day. And so that's where we're at. <laughs> Doc, uh, <laughs> your dessert choice? <laughs> my dessert choice? Well, uh, it's very tough, always. Yeah. Uh, with extra, yeah. extra wool done. Uh -oh. And just think about mince pie, Richard. Yeah, miss, yeah. Well, you know, now is the time to make the mince meat to age. Yeah. Really, 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 been making it in January, February. 
Absolutely. And yeah. the, I was just thinking about the irony of growing up as Catholics, you were not allowed to have mixed meat on Friday. Mm -hmm. The fact that there was no meat <laughs> in the pie was overlooked. And so we had to suffer through Friday to make it to Saturday to finish the pie. It was, it was did, you really, did you really have mint? You could have just looked on the can, you know, and there was no meat in there. No meat. Yeah, okay, so it, I like the, the traditional made with the um, the uh, basically suet, you know, the, the the kidney fat, and then the little strips of meat in there with all that clove and spice and wonderfulness. Awesome. But mostly it's just raisins and apples and, and uh, you know, I mean, I've made it many times. Just cook, cook it up and add every spice you can find and it's wonderful. I went so far as to try to make golden syrup at home once to try to make original. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> it took forever to clean the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any savory dish, Dr. Becker, that you would like to add <laughs> besides mince meat pie? Other, other than uh, a dessert, um, you know, I think lots of Mexican dishes go up yeah. with these wines. Um, um, you know, we could go down to B T era and just put these on the table and tell them to start bringing out the uh, enchiladas and the uh, tacos and all the great Mexican dishes we have in this part of the world, especially the uh, culinaria and the and the, and the uh, cabernet sauvignon. Mm -hmm. I think. I think that culinaria would go really well with like pork shoulder marinated in, in a mole. Uh, yeah, mole, yes. yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, now I'm thoroughly hungry. Galen, do you have <laughs> by any chance uh, what we're sending out? Yes. So for next week, I believe we've got, yes. Okay, we've got the um, lineup of uh, wines produced from grapes grown by Drew Talent. So it'll be week 76 and will include the 2016 Grenache Reserve, the 2017 Cinso, um, and the 2017 Malbec Reserve. Ooh, good choice. Right on. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Any, any final words for anything? No, stay safe, get vaccinated, get the second vaccine, get the booster when it's time. Protect, you're not, it's just not about us. It's about all the other people around us. They're exposed if we're not vaccinated. Right. Children and children. Yep, absolutely. Um, I would like to just make mention that this 19 cab Syrah that uh, Margaret helped pick out the final blend. So thank you, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Alrighty, everybody. Thank you for allowing us in your homes. Let us come say goodbye. Here. <laughs> everybody, wish everybody a great Hi. Oh, hey. <laughs> Just Nicholas. a Nicholas. Bye, Nicholas. Bye. Uh, say goodbye. Good night, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas. You want to try by? Nicholas, he's saluting you. Salute Richard. He's saluting you. <laughs> Got it. Hey, okay. I was saluting <laughs> This is a Well, that was fun, everybody. Cheers, y'all. Have a good night. Cheers.